جزا الله بالخيرات عنا إماتا لنا نقل القرآن عذبا وسلسالا فمنهم بدور سابعة قد تواساطت سماء العلا والعادل زهرا وكمالا In this episode, inshallah ta'ala, I want to answer a very important question that is asked. Many people ask this question, which is, هل تشتمل المصاحف العثمانية على الأحرف السبعة? Do the Masahif Uthman sent to the five main cities, do they consist of the seven Ahruf? The answer depends on what your definition of Al-Ahruf As-Sab'a is. What is the definition for Al-Ahruf As-Sab'a? What do you mean by Al-Ahruf As-Sab'a? Because remember we mentioned many views regarding it. So every scholar or every Imam gave the answer to this question depending on the definition they gave for Al-Ahruf As-Sab'a. And because of this, the views regarding uh, the answer of this question uh, became three. The first view is The first view, it suggests and it says that it only consists of the Quraysh harf. This is the view held by Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, Al-Imam Abi Ja'far al-Tahawi, Ibn Hibban, and Ibn Abdul Bar. And the reason why they said this is because they are of the opinion that the Sab'a, Al-Ahruf al-Sab'a, it means seven dialects of the Arabs. Remember that was, that was their view. Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, Al-Imam al-Tahawi, Ibn Abdul Bar, and others, they held the opinion that the Al-Ahruf al-Sab'a meant seven dialects of the Arabs. So, they say that the Masahif al-Uthmaniyya, it consists of one dialect, and that is the dialect of uh, Al-Quraysh, the dialect of Quraysh. They used a couple of evidence. I'm going to mention two of the evidences that they used. The first evidence that they used is the statement of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu when he spoke to the scribes and he said to them إِذَا اخْتَلَفْتُمْ أَنْتُمْ وَزَيْدٌ If you guys and Zayd differ إِذَا اخْتَلَفْتُمْ أَنْتُمْ وَزَيْدُ بْنُ ثَابِتٍ If you differ amongst yourselves and Zayd فَاكْتُبُوهُ بِلِسَانِ قُرَيْشٍ فَإِنَّمَا نَزَلَ بِلِسَانِهِمْ If you differ amongst yourselves then write it in the dialect of Quraysh, for verily the Qur'an came down on that. So their argument here is, Uthman instructed the Sahabas to write in the dialect of Quraysh. That's what they're saying. Their second argument is, their second argument is, or their second evidence, is that the Ahruf, came down in the early stages of al-Islam fi sadr al-Islam lit-taysiri ala al-ummah to make matters easy for the ummah it came down to remove hardship from them once the people's tongues became uh, trained the people's tongues became used to the recitation of Quraysh or the dialect of Quraysh then the Quran became that one dialect and that's their argument those two arguments have been repelled. Those two, those two arguments or those two evidences have been debunked. And we're going to mention the response that were given to them, inshallah ta'ala. The first response that was given is that it was said to them, Ibn Jarir and Tahawi and Ibn Hibban and Ibn Abdul Bar, it was said to them, you guys saying, you guys saying that Uthman said, to the Sahabas who were writing the Quran, اختلفتم, that statement, اختلفتم, it's not referring to في جوهر الألفاظ وبنية الكلمات. When it wasn't referring to the wordings, it was referring to how to write it. So it has nothing to do with the concept of 
what word should be put in here or not. It's talking about uh, how should it be written, in what way, if you differ in the way that a word is written, okay, then go in accordance to the writing of Quraysh. And the evidence to show that it was referring to just a writing and not Jawharul uh, Al-Fad and Binyatul Kalimat is the fact that he said, Faktubuhu, write it in. The concept was, how should that word be written is what the Khilaf Uthman radiallahu anhu was referring to. The second argument that was given to them, which is, um, there, are, there are no evidences. There are no evidences that suggests Uthman radiallahu anhu, Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he commanded the writers to be written in one harf and to abandon the, the other six. There's no evidences. So for you guys to say that and to claim it, bring a clear-cut evidence. The evidence that you brought, which is, إِذَا اخْتَلَفْتُمْ أَنْتُمْ وَزَيْدُ بِنُ ثَابِتٍ فَاكْتُبُوا بِلِسَانِ قُرَيْشٍ فَإِنَّمَا نَزَلَ بِلِسَانِهِمْ This is not an evidence. It's not a proof. It doesn't show your argument. And last but not least, the third response that was given to them was that the fact that we have Qira'at today, different types of Qira'at in the Qur'an is an evidence to show that the Ahruf is still present in the Qur'an. Okay? So, if it was only Quraysh, then there would be no differences. We'd only see one type of recitation. Now we're going to go into the second opinion. The second view regarding does the Qur'an that we have today, or does the Masahif al Uthmaniyya, does it consist of Al Ahruf al Sabah? The second opinion is the Masahif al Uthmaniyya, the Uthmani Mushaf, it consists of, this is the second opinion, it consists of all of the seven Ahruf. That's the second opinion. The second view suggests, argues that the Masahif al Uthmaniyya, it consists of all of the Ahruf al Sabah. All of them are in here. This view is attributed to Abu Bakr al Baqillani and Jama'atun min al Fuqaha wal Qurra wal Mutakallimin. A large number of the jurists and the Fuqaha, a large number of the reciters of the Quran and the Imam of the Quran, a large number of the Mutakallimin, as Ibn Taymiyyah mentioned in his Al Fatawa. This group they argued this and they suggest they brought forward some evidences the evidence that they brought forward is they said they said it is not permissible for the ummah to abandon they are not allowed to. The Ummah, they have no rights. No one has any rights to abandon a recitation that came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second argument that they suggested and they brought forward was, they said that the Uthmani Masahif were copied, and it was taken from uh, the Mus'haf of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And the Mus'haf of Abu Bakr had all of the seven Ahruf. So they said he copied all of that from it. Those are the two strongest arguments that they put forward. They were responded to. And the response that was given to them was the, fa the fact that the Quran came down in seven Ahruf was rukhsah litaysiri ala al-ummah it was to make matters easy for the ummah it never was the case that the quran came down in seven ahruf because it was obligatory for them to read in and to read in one of those seven ahruf no that wasn't the case the quran came down in these seven ahruf to make it easy for the people when it came to reciting the Quran. And so when something is a rukhsa, you're allowed to leave it and abandon it and do the opposite.
for, ex for example, if you're a traveler, you are allowed to either eat whilst you're traveling or you're allowed to break your fast. That is a ruqsa that's given to you. If a person chooses to fast and leaves off eating, that's something you're allowed to. It was a ruqsa in the first place. It was never obligatory for you to uh, eat. Okay? That's the answer that was given to them. The second answer that was given uh, in response to the second point that they brought, which was that the Quran, the Uthmani Mus'haf, was taken from the Mus'haf of Abu Bakr. And Abu Bakr's Mus'haf had all of the seven Ahruf. The response that was given to them was that the Mus'haf of Abu Bakr had in there Ahruf, which were some of them abrogated. And the Sahabas, after that, unanimously agreed that to dismiss some of the uh, Quran that was in Abu Bakr's Mus'haf. And Abu Bakr's aim and objective was not to unite the people. That wasn't the gharad, that wasn't the head of Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr was just to bring the whole entire Quran in one place, to keep it protected in one place. Whereas Uthman's aim and objective was to unite the people and destroy uh, this disunity that the Muslims are going through. So, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he took from the Mus'haf of Abu Bakr those verses, uh, he dismissed, sorry, some of those verses which were abrogated. And the Sahabas all agreed that it was abrogated. Okay? So, this view is also flawed. The second opinion is also flawed that Abu Bakr al-Baqillani and Jama'at min al-Fuqaha wal-Qurra wal mutakallimin held. The last and final opinion suggests and says that the Uthmani Masahif, Uthman sent five Masahif. Those five Masahif Uthman radiallahu anhu sent, it consists in there or it has or it contains those five masahif that he sent. The last version of the Quran from the seven ahruf. The final version of the Quran. al al akhira The final version of the Quran that was given to the Prophet وسلم, before the Prophet passed away وسلم, the last Ramadan. Jibreel gave the Prophet وسلم, the last version of the Quran. Uthman radiallahu anhu, what he did was that final version of the Qur'an, he spread the ahruf in the five masahif. So here you have a mushaf that contains something that the other one doesn't. All of that was to uh, accommodate for the ahruf. One mushaf doesn't have all of the, one mushaf, doesn't have all of the ahruf in it. But the ahruf, that, the, the ahruf, the seven ahruf, that was the final version, yani the final version is spread in the five masahif of Uthman radiallahu anhu. I hope I haven't confused you guys and that you understood what I'm trying to say. This view is the view of the jumhur, the overwhelming majority of the scholars. And it's the view that Ibn al-Jazari strengthened and pushed. And the evidence and the argument that they brought forward is the following. Number one, they said that the Masahif al-Uthmaniyya, Uthman's Mus'haf, um, was written from the Mus'haf collected by Abu Bakr. And the Sahabas unanimously agreed upon that which is in the Mus'haf of Uthman, all of them. From the seven diet from the seven ahruf, they all agreed upon it. So the ijma of the sahabas was that Uthman's mushaf was unanimously agreed upon. There was not a person who came after Uthman's mushaf and then said Uthman's mushaf has in their abrogated verses. No. The wording's been abrogated. Number two, there is no khabar sahih, an authentic narration. Even not a weak narration that Uthman radiallahu anhu commanded the other remaining ahruf to be burnt. No. Uthman radiallahu anhu, 
there is no way or no narration la da'if wa la sahih that suggests or even shows that Uthman radiallahu anhu commanding commanded the other ahruf to be bent the last and final is the khilafat that are present today the disputes and the dis argumentations that are present regarding the masahif al uthmaniyah is a clear cut evidence to show there are presence of al ahruf al sab'a in it ولذلك ابن الجزري رحمه الله said وهذا القول هو الذي يظهر صوابه this opinion is what seems to be right ولان الاحاديث الصحيحه والاثار المشهوره المستفيضه تدل عليه وتشهد له the authentic ahadith and the statements of the sahabas that are famous and that are common and that are spread all of it indicate and testify to this final opinion so I say this opinion who al sawab this is the strongest opinion and knowledge is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most knowledgeable the most high anything I might have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it inshallah ta'ala I'll see you guys in the next episode barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullahu khaira assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu how can you do a two-second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the Day of Judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the Deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.